Hello Steelers and welcome to this game of O Group. As you can see here, uh, me and Tiny are going to be playing the first scenario today in the 1944 Battle for Normandy uh, supplement that was released a little while ago. I got this when it came out. It's only £9 over on the Two Fat Lardies uh, website, so go and check that out. I'll put a link in the description if I remember, uh, but I will put a link. Uh, also, I've, I've had mine printed out because I, I prefer reading uh, hard copies than I do um, than I do with, with, with PDFs. Uh, I got this done at uh, Docs Direct. Again, I'll put a link in the in the in the notes below for you. And today we are playing. Let me just jump to it. We are playing Scenario One: The Assault on Saint Manoeuvre. Uh, this was the operation against Cannes. Uh, part of June 1944, as part of uh, phase one of Operation Epson. Uh, this is the 44th Lowland Division, the 15th Scottish Division. Uh, we're trying to take the villages St. Modovo and Ligol, sorry for butchering the French, with the support of 9th Royal Tank Regiment. Uh, so, this is going to be a British attack on the German positions at the back here in these uh, villages. Uh, let me just tell you one. I'm not going to go through the entire scenario notes here, but let me just tell you the mission. The British must take at least three of the five built-up areas, so that's these ones here. I'll show you these when, we, when I show you the table and explain those. Uh, or inflict three foobar markers on the Germans before the end of the game. So it's, uh, they've got two, two things they can do there. Obviously the Germans win by avoiding the British uh, victory conditions. British are the attackers, Germans are the defenders. Both battalions are going to use the standard game deployment, so it's going to be nine order dice and things. What I'll do now is I'll just actually stick the orders of battle on the screen right now, rather than showing you the figures I've got, because I think at this point, if you've watched some of my old group videos, you've probably seen my figures. And there's not a great deal of difference in this one and a lot of the other scenarios in the core, core makeup. Uh, Oh, this, this was a quite a simple scenario, so it's quite a basic battalion. The British have got three tanks, they've got two six-pounder Churchills and a crocodile, whereas the Germans have got the Panzer IV J as well. However, the Germans are playing as the, uh, the Panzer Grenadiers, so that's going to be slightly different when it comes to their firing. They get a little bit more firing at close range, and I think as well uh, when they're doing other firing, I'll have to check the, the rules directly for that. But yeah, so basically the British have either got to inflict three FUBARs on the Germans, or they've got to capture three of the built-up areas. So what I'll do is I'll get the table set up, and again, I'm not going to go through the whole um, deployment, and I'll probably not be doing the... Uh, the, the dice rolls on uh, on screen as well. I'll just be showing you some of the action as we go along rather than going through that. If you want to see how the game works, check out some of my earlier O Group videos where I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about how each of the different actions and phases works. This I'm just trying to kind of keep it a bit simple for the video wise really, just so uh, you can have a, a bit of a fun narrative uh, video rather than a, an explanatory video. I think that might work. I don't know. Uh, tell me which ones you enjoy more, really. I mean, obviously, as, as things happen, I am going to be uh, I'm going to be talking about various rules and things like that. Uh, especially since we've got stuff like the Panzer Grenadiers on the table, they can be slightly different. Uh, so it's just so, uh, bits and pieces like that will uh, will come up as they come up. But <laughs> sorry, I'm kind of rambling now. Uh, as I say, I'm kind of kind of trying to keep it a little bit more simple. Uh, for you to watch and enjoy as well. Uh, just let me know what you think about it. All right, so I'll, uh, as I say, I've already shown you the orders of battle, so there's no point in me showing you the figures. What I'll do is I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get set up. I'll show you the table, uh, explain the the scenario and where where we are and what we've got to do. Okay, this is the table looking from the British positions. So we've got the British laid out here. Uh, for their deployment, they actually rolled to deploy six on-table units. And as their tanks don't turn up for the first few turns, obviously uh, they just put their six uh, frontline platoons on. So we've got them all here. We've also got three combat patrols, which at this point are, are pretty superfluous because they're not going to turn into anything. So uh, I wanted the entire reserve uh, company off the table because I want to use them to consolidate once they've captured a particular point. So I'm going to talk about that in a second. We've also got our foo here in the cover of the uh, the fields here. So he's got quite a good 
wide range of uh, area to cover. The stream is cover, but it's crossable by tanks and by infantry, so it's not going to be a problem, but once they're on it, it's in cover. Meanwhile, over here, the Germans, they have uh, quite a few combat patrols. Uh, they also got interdicted twice as well for the first two turns. So we've got here, uh, let me just come around the back of the table so you can see from the German point of view. Uh, we've got our five built-up areas. There's one here, one here, another one here on the crossroads, second one further along, and then the third, fifth one is the farm itself, the large farm. So I do apologise for the shaky cam. Uh, but here we go, we've got a uh, combat patrol out there. We've got another combat patrol here in the other built-up area here. Another one in this one here and another one in the farm over here. Their foo is also out on the front there again with a wide range of vision. Obviously it's quite uh, quite a, 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 a... what's the word here? A, a dangerous point to be at but uh, he needs it to bring in that artillery when the British attack. You can also see as well I've put some on table units, so we've got a platoon here, we've also got a platoon here as well in the orchard at the front, there you can probably just see, and we've also got a sustained fire uh, medium machine gun as well in the bunker at the back. Now these are ambush units, and because I'm playing solo I'm putting them on the table, but I'm not allowing the British to fire at them until they've fired, so they're going to stay basically hidden until uh, either until the British run into them or they fire. To be fair, it's probably not going to be very long before that happens. As I say, this is a relatively basic setup on this one because it's only pretty simple battalions with a couple of armour supports on both sides and a couple of extra anti-tank units. So the Germans have got two MMGs and two Panzerschrecks, whereas the British have got uh, the one Piat. So a relatively basic uh, setup from O group terms and from some of my other games as well but it should be a pretty interesting game especially fighting through these BUAs anyway enough waffle uh, the uh, I think yes I mentioned uh, the, Brit the Germans have already got two interdiction points uh, from the British artillery fire so let's just crack on and see what happens all right, end of the first British turn. First of all, uh, just show you what's happened. Unfortunately uh, for them, their B company was hesitant, so they've not done anything. Uh, a company over here uh, tried, well, they tried with their food to drop some smoke in front of the village here so they could uh, advance. Uh, it didn't come in. They didn't, get the, uh, they didn't get the support, but they have just rapid advanced uh, their entire uh, company here they've got up into the cover of the stream because it provides cover even though you can cross it and they're trying to make for this BUA here uh, forgot to say as well there are 16 turns in this game and also I'm consolidating using this BUA as the consolidation for their third uh, platoon for their third company so that's why they're trying to attack this and capture it as quickly as possible so not a great deal has happened but it's over to the Germans now okay the Germans are for their first action is their forward observer is going to go for an artillery fire at these British here in the open so we need to see if we can uh, get them first of all so let's have a look at that <coughs> well, first up uh, an eight uh, they were going for regimental, sorry I should have mentioned that. Regimental fire is a medium battery fire mission. So that is going to be 7d6 of damage. Uh, it's also got a 5 inch radius on it as well. So let's just check to see who else is in that radius. Uh, they've gone for that centre one there. There's one other section there. So that platoon is also in. Fortunately for the British there. Um, their foo and their company commander are out but this platoon is going to take hits as is this platoon here so let's have a look so what do we say it was uh, for medium battery that's 76 so they're hitting on four ups so just get my 76 together so the first one uh, they have hit with uh, one two three four hits so just put that to, that to remind me and then we have those seven hits on the other one, and that is one, two, three, four hits on them. So four and four. So not great. So now we've got to do the save rolls for both of those. So we just swap over here. We are now saving on a four up for each one. So for the first platoon, let's have a look. Oh dear, uh, that is 
four hits so they are instantly suppressed and a KIA so let's roll for that KIA five or a six no at least they've survived the KIA but the other ones over on the other side let's see if they do any worse oh they can't do much worse can they um they've saved two but they've taken two hits so that has made them hesitant they're already hesitant anyway uh, and there's no KIAs because save two. Um, they would if they had a KIA, they would have to roll to see if that Piat had been destroyed as well, but it hasn't. So the Germans have at least stemmed the attack there, but they have used up their one single artillery mission for the game. Okay, we've got a first bit of infantry firing. The Germans have just used up three orders to get this uh, unit, this platoon, into the built-up area that the British are currently attacking. It was important. Because they've been interdicted, they, uh, it cost them three orders because the first two they failed to actually get anybody in there. The third one they used up and I was, I really needed to get them in there so that's why I carried on using the orders. They are firing at these British here who are advancing across the, the stream. They're at close range. Because they're Panzer Grenadiers that gives them a plus two to hit. Uh, so they're actually rolling 8d6. Uh, on their dice, so let's do that. But they've got a spotting dice as well. Uh, Panzer Grenadiers are very good for firing, but when it comes to close assault, uh, they will always lose a draw. So they're they're good when it's uh, long range firing, but when they when you get in close with them, uh, there's a more more chance of you actually winning against them uh, in the close assault. But let's just see what they do with the firing. So we're rolling our spotting dice. They haven't spotted the British, uh, but they have put one two. Uh, just three hits on the British there. So let's roll those saves to the British. Saving now on a three up because they haven't been spotted. Uh, they passed all of them apart from one, so that's one shock. Okay, so we've got the Germans have got the initiative for turn two. They're starting with these Panzer Grenadiers here. These are firing again at the guys in cover down there. So this time they've spotted them. Uh, and they've got one, two, three, four, five, six hits on those British, so let's see how many of those they save. They're now saving all fours up. So we've got uh, one, two, three, four fails. Two saves, four fails. So that's one, two, they are suppressed, and then automatic KIA. So one of their bases is straight off, so they're not doing very well. This attack seems to have stalled already. Um, okay, uh, they can't return fire because they are suppressed, so that ends that little uh, tete-a-tete. -tete. Okay, the British have managed to lay down smoke, but they've just used their uh, battalion mortars to put down six inch worth of smoke there to, to block that. It's gonna be around for the next two turns, so uh, into the next defensive uh, phase, because this is the defensive phase of turn two. And then we're firing. These guys have just reduced their shock, and then I'm gonna get these ones over here. These have moved to the edge of the wood. They're firing at the Panzer Grenadiers in the buildings. And then we're also going to be firing with the other ones over here as well who haven't moved. So the first ones that have moved, so we're firing for them. Uh, they haven't spotted, uh, but they have hit one. So the Germans are defending on a three or above. So look, they've managed to uh, sort that out. And the other ones over here are firing with four D6 because they're firing into buildings that they haven't moved with a spotting dice as well. They haven't spotted, but they have hit four times. So let's see, the Germans are defending on a three or a ball. And they defended all of them. So the Germans are actually going to use one of their uh, other orders uh, from last turn and they are going to return fire. So they're firing down here. Uh, these ones who fired at them, because they have to. Uh, so they are firing, let's work it out. We're firing first of all with 6d6 because there's a full platoon in there. They are Panzer Grenadiers, so they get an extra d6. They're not at close range but they are firing at somebody in cover, so they are spotting as well. So we have to roll those dice. So they've spotted, uh, but only landed one hit. So the British here are saving on a four or above. No, they've uh, failed that, so they have taken one shock. Uh, that's slowly building up, uh, but that's it for that turn, I think. All right, next turn, the British have seized the initiative this time, so these are gonna fire. Now the Germans first of all, they're not going to do a great deal because they're only rolling two dice and spotting dice. So look, they spotted that twice though. So the Germans are saving on a four up. So look, uh, one save, one fail. So that's reduced, that's put shock on them at least. 
Those Germans are going to return fire, so let's just do that first of all. They are firing as Panzergrenadiers, so they're actually they've reduced from eight down to seven because of that shock now, uh, because they're in close range and they're also in cover. So let's just see they have spotted them. Uh, this time we've only landed three shots on the British defenders. So uh, let's see, the British are saving there on a four or above. If they're spotted, uh, saved all of them, double six and a four. So no effects from the Panzer Grenadiers, finally. Uh, let's have a look at the next British who are firing. We've got the ones by the woods, they are firing with four and then also a spotting dice as well. But I'll tell you what, uh, yes, they are, they're going to do that, so let's see what happens. So, uh, they haven't spotted, but they have landed two hits on those Germans. So the Germans are saving on three or above. Uh, that's one save, one fail, so they are on two shock now. Now, big question is, do we get the British to fire with that third platoon, and then hopefully suppress the Germans, and then use another commander order to get the other unit into attack with them. I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to fire with these ones here. So they're firing with three dice and a spotting dice. Uh, well, they're actually, they're automatically... Um, no, they're not They're not suppressed yet, so they, they, they need a spotting dice. So let's just see what happens. They haven't spotted, but they have landed two hits on them. So let's see what those two hits are doing. Three and above for the Germans to save. So they've saved one, failed one, so that has suppressed them. Okay, with that in mind, what I think I'm going to do now then, this is a time for a, uh, a company commander order. So we're going to put this guy down here, I'm going to, and I've got a spare order here, so this is going to cost that much. And then we also have to roll to see how many extra orders it costs. And for a company commander, it's a first-rate battalion, so let's just roll one dice and see what we get. Uh, one, it's going to cost us two extra orders, so that is actually going to come out of the HQ orders. So that takes them down to four now. And then what they're going to do is they're going to get these to charge in and hopefully close assault those Germans. So let's see how far they get, first of all. Well, actually, first of all, they're going to fire and then charge him because that's so they they're starting with six dice. Almost that six dice and a spotting dice. However, they are about to move, so minus two off that. Firing into buildings, minus two as well. Don't think this is going to do a great deal of damage. You never know. Four up for the spotting dice. They spotted and they've hit one. The Germans are then saving on a four or above. Uh, they've saved it. Now we've got to see how far they actually get, if they can get into close combat. So well, let's have a look. We are currently seven inches away, so they really need to be six inches away to be able. They need a six or above to get in. So, so fingers crossed they'll be able to get in. That's eight inches. So yeah, they are in up against the edge of that, uh, protected by that smoke as well, because that's remaining there until the end of this phase. So they've got in, so that's another couple of orders on them. So the British have got four, uh, five dice because they're attacking into buildings. The Germans have got three because they're suppressed. So everything on a four or above is in effect. So let's have a look. We've got two German hits, and then we've got one, two, three, four British hits. Ooh, okay, so that is... Uh, the Germans are already suppressed. So they are automatic, they take two automatic KIAs, so that's two of their sections gone. So that is going to be a morale test for that, uh, that um, final section, because they've been reduced. The British then take two hits, so that's two there. The British cause more KIAs than the Germans, so they will then uh, run anyway, so they will retreat. Uh, the British will then move into and capture that BUA, so let's just see how far the Germans go. So they're going to run away 12 inches, I doubt that's enough to take them off the board. Uh, they also have to do a morale test as well, so they run back here. So they're way back. Uh, the British have moved in, the British get to do a morale test to see if they can reduce that shock. Uh, but they've actually managed to get into the BUA at least. 
So let's just see if they reduce their shock or not. And a four up and they do. Four, yes, they are now down onto one shock, so that's pretty good for them. Uh, now the Germans, they have to do a test to see if they are dispersed or not. The Germans are regular, so we're going to see if they pass their morale test. A four up and they do. No, they failed it, so they are dispersed. So that is three uh, sections gone. One more, and it's a foobar. So that was pretty good going, and the British have actually captured one built-up area as well. Okay, we've got a hell of a lot of firing coming now from the Germans in their turn. So we've got um, these guys over here are going to fire, and they're all firing at these uh, British who've just captured this area here. These ones are firing, these ones are firing. We've also got the sustained fire um, machine gun in the <clears throat> over in the bunker as well at the back, which is going to fire first. So I'll just start with that. Uh, 4d6 because he's got 2d6 off because he's firing into buildings. So let's have a look. So we've got, we've spotted him, uh, hit two. So the British are saving on a four or above. Uh, two fails, so that has automatically suppressed the British. So everything else after this is now going to be KIA rolls, unfortunately for them. So let's just work out how many we got. So we've got first one, first of all, let me just flip those orders over so I know they've been used. So we've got, for these ones here, Panzer Grenadiers, <coughs> two, four, six. They're at close range, so that's another six, uh, another two, so that takes them up to eight. Minus two because they're firing uh, into buildings, so it takes them down to six. But to spotting dice as well. So let's see, will the British survive this? Who knows? Uh, so we've only got two hits and no spots on that one. So the British are saving on a three up on this. Uh, saved one, one hit, so that's a KIA roll. Five or a six. Uh, yes, so they lost one section straight away. Ooh, <laughs> right, we've got another. Panzer Grenadier group here, these ones here are firing, same again, they're close range, so they are also firing at that, and let's see what they do, uh, they haven't spotted, but they have landed two hits, so the British are saving two on threes up, uh, one on the three, so that's another KIA roll, so roll again, one, no, it's okay, they've not, they've survived it, but they're taking some hammer, and then finally, the last one's are firing with five dice because they're not firing at close range uh, but they are Panzer Grenadiers so they get that extra dice for firing uh, and they're firing into buildings so let's see uh, that is one two three four hits and no spots so British this time is saving on threes up they've saved three of them one has failed is it a KIA no, it's not, because if it had been, that would have taken them right down. So, oof, they just survived that. Bloody hell, that, that was uh, some hammer in there. Right, the Germans had one order left, so what they've actually done is they've used a company commander order with that last order to give, get these to charge in uh, and do some combat against the British. I had forgotten that these have actually got a, a medium machine gun in there. So it's cost them an order. I rolled the dice for it. It cost them two orders in total, so they've taken one from the HQ and one from here as well. Before they charge in, they're going to fire, of course, so let's just work out what we're on with that. We've got one, two, three, four, six to start with. They go up to eight because they're close-range Panzer Grenadiers. However, they're about to move, so minus two. They are also firing into buildings, so minus two as well. The British are suppressed, so they're automatically not spotted anyway. So let's just see. This is for the fire as they go in. Two hits, the British are saving on a three-up. Uh, they saved one, failed one, so is it a KIA? Yes, they've lost another section, so this is before the Germans have even got in there. So we've got to do a morale test for the British to see if they'll stand and fight anyway, so three up. Uh, yes, they have, uh, and then they have to do a morale test. They've, they've passed their unit fail test, uh, so they don't retreat anyway, let's, uh, but let's see if they do stand and fight. Uh, no, they don't. So they will retreat. So the Germans have run off. Uh, the Germans run in, capture the place, uh, and the British have run off. All right. First things first. The Germans have taken the initiative in the next turn. This is now turn four. First thing they're doing is they're dropping um, battalion mortars on this unit over here before we deal with the others over on the left. The British, unfortunately for them, have got a hesitant unit in Company A on their left flank. But these guys are not. But they are being hit by battery. So let's see what the uh, accuracy is, first of all. It is an eight, which is zeroed in. 
so that's 5d6 because it's battalion of mortars and they are hitting on a 4 or above and then they're saving on a 4 or above uh, it's 5 inch burst so it's only going to take them let's have a look, so we've got one, two hits so they are saving, they've already got one shock but they are saving on a 4 or above two fails, so that's them suppressed as well so they either stay where they are and take another shock or they retreat they retreat they're going to fall off table so i'm going to stand them there and take another shock another shock means a kia for them though five or six and it's a section off three no they survived it so at least they're sitting there under the barrage as it's going off and they haven't taken any more hits and then over here we've got the panzer grenadiers who moved into the built-up area with their medium machine gun they are firing at this almost destroyed uh, platoon here first of all with one order so they're just firing eight they're in the open so there's no spotting down so hitting on fours up you think with three there so three saves they're already suppressed let's just see uh, they have saved all of them then so that's all right however the germans are going to come back and they are going to do a company commander order so I'll just put a company commander order down on this guy he is going to get them to fire again so we put down another order so we've got three left over and we'll just see how many uh, orders extra they have to spend uh, three is uh, two extra orders so two extra ordinaries so there we go uh, that's used up all their basic orders they've still got HQ orders but we want to they want to destroy as many sections as possible at this point uh, to force those foobars on the British so firing again same again fours up the hits one two three four hits this time they are saving on a four up because they're in the open uh, fail two so that is an automatic KIA so that is a destroyed section I was hoping that they would be able to destroy the section with the first round and then f start firing at this uh, platoon here as well but wasn't to be However, I've just realised that was their fourth section that the British have lost, so they've now got their first foobar. So they are down by one on their dice roll for their command, so they're down to eight from nine. <clears throat> because the British have got that hesitant unit, they've not been able to do a great deal. They've actually just done some rapid moves with their company on the right-hand side to get them a bit further forward. And also done some rallying as well. They did a company commander order to get rid of some more shock. They've got some British some shock on one of the other guys on the other, uh, the hesitant company. And then finally, they've been using some HQ orders and they're going to use their foo to drop some fire on the German foo. They can't see these here yet and they're not firing into that terrain, so they can't actually hit them. They're still in ambush. So we just need to see, uh, they're only using their battalion mortars but it's obviously cost them two points to do that so we just need to see the accuracy and then it'll hit them with four uh, 5d6 potentially so let's have a look <laughs> three uh, that is uh, that's so that's going to be harassing fire yes six to three is harassing fire so at least they've hit it well they've they've landed it but uh, it's not going to be great, is it? So let's see, we're hitting on a 4 or above. The Germans are then going to be saving on a 3 or above. So, But there are two things in there. They've got the transport and the uh, foo themselves. So let's see, first of all for the foo, 4 hits, up to four, 5 hits for him potentially, 4 ups should I say. So that's 3 hits on the foo himself. So I'll just stick that there to remind me. And then on the transport, uh, just 1 hit on the transport. Okay, so we now have, <coughs> uh, so we've got three hits on the Foo, so let's just roll those. He's saving on a two or above, actually, because he's a Foo anyway, so it doesn't really matter what the fire was. Uh, he's saved all of those, so they're off. And then the transport, because it's harassing fire, uh, they, have, they are saving on, it was only one hit, wasn't it? Not five. Uh, they are saving on a three or above. Let's see, <laughs> that's cocked, we roll it. A six they've survived so they did fire but not much to, to, to write home about uh, the Germans took initiative this turn once again um, so they are first thing they're doing is they're dropping artillery once again on these guys with their battalion mortars uh, so we just need to see what kind of fire it is that's a four so that's harassing uh, so they're gonna be saving on a three up but uh, they are hitting on fours or above uh, with five d6 because it is the uh, battalion mortars 
Uh, only one hit there, so it was a five. One hit, they're saving on a three or above. Four, they've saved, no effect. Unfortunately for the Germans, they got a hesitant company on this side, uh, so all they can do is, these, is fire with these ones at the front at these British here in the stream. But they did use two orders to bring on their reserves, so they've actually committed all of their reserves apart from their Panzer IV now. Uh, so the only thing that they can do now is fire at close range because these are hesitant of these. But they do have an MMG, so let's just see what happens. Hitting on a, uh, they're not spotted, so they are hitting on fours up, so we go one, two, three, four, five hits. Uh, the British there are saving on. Uh, three up because they haven't been spotted. So let's have a look. So they've failed three, saved two, so they are actually suppressed. But at least they haven't had a KIA roll. Okay, over here, it's the British turn now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to, first of all, issue an order to these, and they are going to try to reduce that suppressed. Then I'm going to give them a company commander order and get them to move back because I want to drop fire on the uh, the built-up area and they're too close at the moment. You need to be at least eight inches away. So first of all, let's see if they pass their morale test. This is quite important. Mm, they've got it down to two, which means they're hesitant. So now we're going to have to give them a uh, morale order from the... Uh, company commander, so let's just put company commander order down so we know straight away. And it's also it's going to cost us one anyway because they want to rally and then move. That's their plan. So they only re they're only going to rally one off, but we need to see how many orders it's actually going to cost us to do that. And the company commander order costs us six, so that's zero, so no extra. So it's only going to cost us that one. Uh, so then they roll to see if they rally. So now they either pass this or they move one or the other. Let's have a look. Four, they've passed it, so that's brought them down at least. And then they are going to fall back with a rapid move back to the cover that's just behind them here. So let's just do that. So rapid move is the higher of the two dice, you can re-roll any ones. So that's ten inches. So they have just got all the way back to where they wanted to go, go to. So they are now out of line of sight of that built-up area and the British are now going to fire their artillery so we'll just move on to doing that. So we've got our end point. I can't use artillery because you have to do it at the start of the turn so they're actually going to use their mortars instead so we just basically roll straight away to see what uh, kind of hit we get. And we've got a seven which is zeroed in so that's going to be five hits uh, or five potential hits on those Germans in the buildings, minus one because they're in buildings, so four dice for the artillery. Let's just see what happens. That is two hits. The Germans, therefore, are saving on a uh, four or above because they were zeroed in on. Uh, so they've saved one and taken one shock. Meanwhile, over here on the British right flank, uh, B Company have started moving their platoons forward uh, again just to try to get them a little closer to the German uh, lines. Then the final thing the British are doing, these ones over here are firing into those buildings again. They're out, they're too far away uh, to be, well no they can be reacted to by those Germans but let's just see what they do anyway first of all. Spotting dice and uh, they've not spotted but they have hit one. The Germans are saving on a three or above. Five they've saved. Those Germans can use a react uh, even though they are uh, hesitant, they can norm do any normal reactions, so they can do that, so they were going to. Uh, they are firing at, uh, let's just work it out, we're starting with six dice anyway, they get an extra one for being uh, Panzer Grenadiers. They, are, they do have shock and they are firing into cover, so it's going to be a, a spotting dice as well. So let's just see, they're spotted, uh, but hit through. So the British are saving on a four or above. Uh, they've uh, saved one, failed two. So that is them hesitant, unfortunately for them. Right, over here, British are still advancing and they're pushing forward as well on the right flank. Uh, thought may as well try and do something <laughs> at least. So these are pushing forward. These are going to move up to the fence line. The Germans have yet to uh, show themselves, but they are springing the ambush, and they're going to try to spring the ambush as these move. So they're going to try to interrupt their movement as they do. So let's first of all, the British are doing a rapid move because they don't really know the Germans are there. So they do a rapid move up to that fence line. 
So that is 10 inches. So that's definitely enough, I think, to get them to the fence line. They were going to go, it's tactical bound, so they're going to go to the fence line. However, the Germans are going to try to interrupt that uh, movement by firing at, popping up and firing at them. So they've now revealed themselves. So now they're on a four up uh, and they can fire and interrupt that, uh, the, the British movement. Let's have a look. Three. No, they can't. So <laughs> this means then that the British are then just going to absolutely crash into them. Uh, so we've given the order because they have actually appeared. Um, but they're going to crash into them. So there's going to be an automatic um, fight there, I think. So it's basically, uh, because the Germans aren't actually defending anything in particular, they're just all going to be rolling 2d6 for each of their sections. So uh, let's just see what happens. It's a bit of a weird situation because obviously I knew they were there, but this is what the British were going to do. So uh, fours up are hits. Red German, blue British. Let's have a look. So we've got one, two, three, four shock on the Germans, so that has suppressed them and also a KIA roll, so let's pull that down to remind us. And then the British have taken one, two, three hits, so that has suppressed them, but no KIA roll. The British have actually won that because it's four against three is the hits. Let's see if that KIA roll is uh, lands on anything. A, one, a five and a six it does. No it doesn't, but the Germans are pushed out, so they're going to have to retreat. The British will get to rally uh, so let's do that rally first of all for the British, roll it on a blue dice. Four up and they can rally. No, they can't rally, so they're still suppressed, but they do take the place. The Germans are going to retreat. 3d6 though. So let's see how far back they fall. Uh, 10, 13 inches. So I'll just get those set up, but uh, that was a relatively successful blunder on the British part, wasn't it? And then just finally for this, uh, the British turn, just quickly to show you, uh, I've used a company commander order just to rally them and they rallied all three of their shock offs, so they're back to normal now. Uh, they're in a good position and back to normal, threatening that foo if nothing else. So we've got a bit of German fire in here, they've done a lot of movement, they've just brought up their reserves, pushed them a bit forward, they've done a bit of rallying here and there, they moved their foo out of the way of the British and they're also firing with these, they've rallied them off already so I've just done that off camera. And then they are firing, so we're going to be starting with uh, six dice. They are firing at uh, normal range, so that's they're firing at these, uh, just so you know, they're already on two shock. And they do get those re-rolls because they've got an MMG in there, so let's give it a go. Uh, they are in cover as well, by the way, just forgot about that. So they've been spotted, and they've hit one, two, three. They do get to re-roll three of those, so let's just have a look. Uh, none of those have hit. So it's only three hits with a spot though, so it's four up. Uh, they've failed all of them, so that is one and another KIA for the British. Okay, British took the initiative this turn. First thing they're doing is they're going to put some fire on that built up area with the artillery. So they're going to need to contact, they're going to go with divisional once again, so they're going to need a 7 or above, uh, I think, to, to get it in. So let's just see what they get. That's an 8, that's a heavy battery fire, so that's going to be 8d6. So let's have a look at how accurate it actually is. Uh, a 10, that is, oh, that's a critical hit, I think. Uh, yes, a critical hit. 10 plus is a critical hit. So, let's see what our modifiers are. We get a plus one for the uh, critical hit. So, each uh, unit in there is going to be hit with... Uh, it's only going to be on that built-up area. Uh, we said it was heavy battery fire, so it's going to be 8d6 first of all. So there's the 8. We get a plus one for that critical hit. Minus one because they're in buildings. And I think that's it. Yeah, just minus one because they're in the buildings. So they're hitting on fours up. Okay, that's a good number of hits. One, two, three, four, five, six hits. Uh, it is therefore zeroed in. The Germans then are saving on a four or above. And they have failed five of those. They've only saved one. So that is an automatic suppression. And a KIA as well, uh, an automatic KIA. 
So we've got one section off, so that is a foobar for the Germans, their first foobar. Uh, the one thing I keep forgetting to do is they've got to do a command crisis when they do get a foobar, so I'll do that in a second. Now, they either stay where they are or they ret uh, or and take another shock or they retreat. Uh, first of all, let me test to see if that MMG has been destroyed, a one or two and it has. No, it hasn't. Uh, do they stay where they are? Do they retreat? They are going to retreat. Uh, to try to get away. No, they're going to stay where they are, so that means it's another hit, basically, another shock, so that becomes another KIA roll. So let's just see. Uh, <laughs> they probably should have run away there. Right, they've just lost their another section, so that means they're going to have to now do a morale test. So they test on a four or above. Five, they test, they stand where they are at least, uh, but They've also taken another KIA hit, so that is another test on that. If that MMG's gone, no it hasn't. So they've still got an MMG, but only one section left, and they are suppressed. Ooh, pretty nasty for them. Now we've got to do the um, the command crisis roll. So first of all, uh, I have to do it as a solo player. So first of all, uh, the first test is, if you remember, we roll a dice, and then we roll for the German dice. And if the Germans match it on the first one, they lose two HQ orders. If they match it on the second one, they lose uh, one HQ order. Otherwise, it's, no it's nothing. So, let's see. So, we've got a two for the British roll. So, the first German roll is a six. No, so it doesn't affect them. Second one, no, it doesn't affect them. So, they don't lose any HQ orders at least. But they do have a foobar. Okay, over here, we're getting these two British, sec uh, two British platoons to fire at those Germans there in cover. These are just grenadiers, they are second line grenadiers as well, they're not even good grenadiers. So the first ones they're just firing with 6d6 anyway, with a spotting dice. Uh, so let's have a look, so they have spotted them and also hit them with... Uh, sorry, this is these ones, the other ones are going to get a plus one because they're close range. Uh, so they've hit them with three and spotted them. So they are saving on a four or above. So look, they failed all of those, so that's suppressed them straight away. Well then, with that in mind, is it worthwhile actually firing and rather using these to, to charge in? So these are put them, put the fire down on them. Uh, and then I think, yeah, let's charge in with these. Uh, so they're going to fire first and then they're going to charge in to attack. Uh, because there's more chance of clearing them out if they do that. So let's have a look at the firing first of all. They're about to move, so they're firing with six first of all. Uh, plus one because it's close range, however they are just about to move, so firing with five and a spotting dice because they are in cover in that little shed bit area. So let's see they spotted them and also another one, two, uh, three hits on them. So the Germans are saving on uh, fours up. So they've failed one, but um, they've managed to take two, so uh, five or six is a KIA. So look, no, uh, they haven't killed them. Now we've got to see how far the British actually get into contact. Five inches, that's more than enough because they were about four inches away. So I'm just going to put these up against them. I'm going in with uh, bringing up the Piat. Right, so we've got now, uh, there's, it's basically it's going to be six British dice because they haven't got anything else. Uh, and they're not in buildings. And three German dice. So that's all it is. So again, all hits count, no saves. So let's just see what, what happens. This could be good for the British. Uh, they've got two hits. So that is a KIA and they've taken one hit themselves. So an automatic KIA for the Germans. That is, that's proven them up to six so far. Six sections gone. Uh, but they've taken one hit themselves. The Germans therefore lose so they will retreat, and they will retreat, let's see, 3d6, uh, they retreat 9 inches, so they're going to be way back back here somewhere, so I'll just get those out of the way. And then the British take that position, so they're now in cover, whereas those Germans in front are. They also then get that rally roll, so let's see if they get it. 4 up, yep, they can, they got rid of that. So that was their order, so that was pretty good, wasn't it? Uh, let me just have a think about what I want to do next with them. 
I've just realised that that move has actually brought them to within one inch contact with that second platoon, so they're going to have to fight them as well. The second platoon is going to stand and fight. I always forget about the um, the, op the the opposition gets a, a, a vote as well in this. Um, but the British are only attacking with five because they didn't do any fire uh, previous fire, so the Germans may come out on top on this one. They're fighting with, a, with six dice against the British five, so let's just see anyway. Fours up on both our hits. So... Germans have scored one, two, three, four hits, so that's a full suppression and a KIA. Ooh, might not go the way of the British. Uh, the British have scored one, two, three hits, so that'll suppress the Germans at least. But the Germans have won, uh, so the British have taken a KIA roll. Let's have a look. Two, uh, no, they've passed it, so they're okay, but they are suppressed, so then they will get thrown back. They throw back 3d6, they've fallen back 14 inches, so all that time it took them to get over there. And they are now back, way back over into the fields behind themselves here. So they got him, but just bit off a little bit more than they could chew, I think, there. Uh, the Germans then will get a chance at, at uh, uh, reducing their morale. Just one though, six they have, so they've got it down to a two instead of a, uh, instead of a suppressed. So that's not too bad at least. However, we still do have another uh, British section over here. So let me have a think about what we're going to do with them. All right, what happens here is going to be dependent on what happens next. So I'm going to get these to move down to here to try to shoot at the Germans. And then I'm going to probably try to get these to charge in with a command, company commander order to try and finish them off if they get suppressed. So let's just see, first of all, I could go and get that company commander over there, but I kind of want to destroy as many Germans as possible, so let's just go for those first of all. So we're going to move first of all. Well, that's 11 inches, so that's going to bring them definitely up to that, that fence line, which is just where they wanted. So they're going to move up to here, stop there, so this is their normal order, and then they're going to fire. So they are firing at the Germans. They've moved. So it's um, so they're starting with 66 minus two. I don't think they're in close range. No, they are. They're just in close range. So it's actually 5d6. The Germans are in cover, so they're uh, rolling the spotting dice to see if they can see them. So let's just uh, clear that dice tray out and let's have a look, see what happens. They have not spotted them, but they have landed two hits on them. So the Germans are saving on a four or above. Uh, they've saved one, failed one, so that has suppressed them. So what we're going to do now is, because they are now suppressed, I'm going to go in and try to attack with these. Now they need to be within an inch of those Germans. They are currently ooh, 12 inches away. Uh, is it worth it, or is it worth them just firing again? Or even just getting these to fire again. Or even just getting these to charge in. Yeah, let's charge these in, because at least they'll make it. There's no point charging them in. So, we're going to issue a company order, company commander order. He's going to give that out to these. So it's going to be, it's going to come from the HQ, so that drops us down to four. Plus however many, we have, however many extra it costs. Five is one extra, so that drops them down to three on there. HQ orders, then they are going to fire and then charge in. So they are rolling once again on a five up because they are close range and uh, about to move. So they haven't spotted, but they have hit with two. The Germans therefore are saving on a four up. They've saved one, failed one, so that's a KIA roll first of all. Uh, four, no, they're okay. Whew, that was close. Then they're gonna charge in. So let's see how far they go. They need, basically need a five up. Yes, there's enough there. So they will go into action again. Let's just get them in there. And this is their second set of orders. Uh, right, so now uh, we have the British have got six uh, dice against the Germans, three because they are suppressed. So same again, all hits count. We've caused, British have caused one, two, three hits. The Germans haven't hit a single one. So that is uh, an automatic KIA for the Germans. And a secondary roll on that KIA. So let's see. Five or a six. 
Yes, that's a second one off. So that's going to be a uh, that's going to be a uh, a test to see if they if they flee or not. Uh, that is also one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we've got. So let's see if they stand or if they rout. A four up. No, they have gone. So that has been dispersed. So that is a second full bar for the Germans. Ooh, that went uh, nasty for them, didn't it? However, unfortunately for the British now, they're getting fire coming in from this building and this building at uh, the ones in cover there. So first of all, we're just going to start with the ones with uh, 76. This is the ones here on the spotting dice. Oh, look, they're not spotted them and they've hit once. So the British are saving on three orables. Uh, no, they've taken a hit. And the second one. They are closer, so they're in close range, so they're getting a dice plus a spotting dice. Let's have a look. Uh, they're not spotted, but they've landed one, two, three, four hits this time. So the British are saving on a four or above. Uh, sorry, a three or above. Uh, they failed two of them, so that actually it's made them suppressed. Uh, so they've pushed all that way forward, but they are now suppressed. Then we've got company commander has moved over here then he's also given these another order a roll for it it was two orders so he's used uh, used up the final orders of the uh, the Germans and they are going to attack into those British there uh, first of all they're going to fire at them though before they go in they're about to move so that's going to be uh, five uh, six dice because of the range and the fact that they're Panzer Grenadiers as well so let's just see what happens They've spotted them and hit uh, two hits, so that is an automatic KIA, so that's one that happened straight away. Uh, is that a foobar yet? No, they need two more and it's a foobar. I think they're going to make this, but let's just test it anyway, see how far they get. Yeah, hit nine, so they're in. Uh, the British have got no orders to react to this, so I'm just going to put these in here. They may clear these out. This is really desperate uh, fighting here, isn't it? So we've got, we're going to have six German... Uh, dice on the attack against three, uh, two British dice on the attack. So let's just see what happens here. Uh, we've got one German hit, no British hit. So the Germans have won. So the British have pushed back. But is it a KIA? Six. Yes, it is. So that means there's going to be a morale test. They're automatic. They automatically run away. So let's just see how far away they run away. Uh, they've run away uh, nine, ten, eleven. So. That'll put them back over that stream. And then they're going to do a morale test to see if they actually stand as well because they're down to their last uh, section. So four and above and they will. Six, yes they do, but they do run away. So bad times. Okay, what happens over here is what <laughs> depends. is going to be very dependent on what happens next. Uh, I'm using, uh, first of all, I'm going to use the... Uh, I've, I've just done this kind of out of our sequence, but I'm using the... Uh, artillery spotter to actually drop mortar fire on these. These are then going to rally anyway. I've already done it. It's just to get rid of it, just get it out of the way so it's not on the screen. Uh, but they, all they did was a full rally. But we're going to try to drop some uh, divisional fire on these Germans. So let's see if they do. First of all, that's a 10. So that is uh, British. It's a mic mission. That's a heavy battery mission with two re-rolls per attack. This is going to be their second and last uh, battery fire uh, because they fired it previously with that heavy battery. So this is, what did we say it was? A mic mission. So it's a heavy battery fire, 8d6 with two re-rolls per attack. Uh, so there's only one going to be in there. Let's just see how accurate it actually is as well. Uh, an 8, so that's zeroed in. So that is going to be 8 hits with up to two re-rolls on there. So let's just gather these up. We've got two, four, six, eight there. Hitting on four or above. Blimey, that's pretty much everything. That's four, five hits, three misses. Two of those we can re-roll. So both of those are missed, but that is five hits on those Germans. So that is an automatic, oh no, sorry, the they're not automatic hits, are they? They are saves. So let's just clear those out. So five hits for those Germans. Let's see what they get. 
Ooh, they have failed four of them. So that's three hits, so that's a suppression and a KIA roll. So let's see if that's a KIA on them. Yes, it's a KIA, so that's taken off one of theirs. So they are now on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's their tenth section lost. Two more sections and it's game over for them. So as I said, this was this was completely now they either stand or they withdraw or they take an extra shock or they're gonna they are gonna withdraw. They're not stupid, so let's get them out of there. So they have moved nine inches and they are away. Okay, time to start unpicking these Germans, I think. So I've given an order to the uh, to um, Churchills that arrived last time. These are both going to now fire at the Germans there. They're starting with a hitchy of five, firing into buildings, minus two, uh, moving, minus one. However, they're firing at close range, plus one, but they are firing with a spotting dice. So first one, number one, let's have a look. Spotted and two hits. So those Germans are saving on a four up. Saved one, taken one damage, so that's uh, one down. And then the second one, he's firing as well. And that's a spot and one hit. The Germans then saving on a four up. Uh, no, they haven't saved, so they are now suppressed in there. So, but it's not a KIA roll, so I'm going to need somebody else to move in to start firing at them, aren't I? Okay, the British have now started bringing their reserves on, so they've brought on uh, these two sections here, well these two platoons, uh, and they've also given these a second order with their company commander using up three orders, then move forward up to the stream and they're now firing into that building again just to try to destroy those Germans if they can. Let's have a look. Uh, they've spotted them and they've hit once, so let's just see. Uh, that, oh no, it's a, possibly a save. Uh, they've saved it so they're okay, so no effect. Okay, as we're just about to go into turn 8, I just want to show you really what's happened because quite a bit's happened, it's probably a little bit confusing at this point. So over here we had the British attacks into the orchard and around that area that managed to push the Germans out. They re-attacked and again managed to push the, the British back out. The ones you may remember, uh, they were suppressed so I tried to rally them in this turn but they, they failed so they've run all the way back to the end of the table. They have brought on their Panzer IV at least, so we've got some support. They also spent the rest of their turn, the Germans, uh, trying to rally off shock. They did relatively successfully in a couple of places, they had to do it twice over here but it meant that they couldn't fire. Meanwhile the British have pushed forward their two Churchills. They've also uh, brought on their second uh, company, or uh, parts of it at least, there's still one platoon behind that's going to come on this turn, they hope, uh, and then that's going to hopefully uh, push the, the fight forward. I wanted to do some consolidation in this building, but they just couldn't hold on to it for long enough, and that was the problem. So anyway, back to the fight. Okay, first of all, we've got the two Churchills. These are both firing at that built-up area there. Let's try and clear those Germans out, both hitting with 4d6s and the spotting dice. Uh, so they spotted, first one anyway, spotted and hit two. The Germans are saving on fours. Let's have a look. Uh, save one, lost one. So then the next one is doing the same again. These are just, I'm just using these as infantry support now. Next up, uh, so they spotted and hit one, two, three this time. So three saves on the Germans, and let's see what they're saving on a four up. Failed two, so that's a suppressed and a KIA. So we'll take that down to there, and then that KIA roll. Uh, no, it hasn't. Uh, has it destroyed the MMG? One or two it has. Yes, it has. MMG's gone, but it doesn't count as a section for foobars. All right, we are now going to hit them again with the artillery. Same target, so uh, it's okay. Uh, so it's going to be the uh, only one, uh, one, one order. So let's see what how accurate it is. But we're hitting them with the uh, with the mortars. So let's have a look. Seven is on target, so that's a hit. So they they are hitting with five d six, but minus one because they're in buildings. So four d six. That's one hit. The Germans are saving on a four up. They've saved it, so no effect there. Right, next up, <laughs> I'm going to try to assault those Germans. Actually, no, the Germans then either take a shock or they retreat. Uh, they are going to retreat. So they're falling back 10 inches, so that takes them quite a way back. Uh, yeah, I'll put them back over here. 
They're not standing that. They won't stand that heat. Uh, and then I'm going to try to move these into the building. I think they're about eight inches away. Uh, nine inches. So they're going to do a rapid move to try to get into that building. So 3d6. They can re-roll a one. Uh, eight inch. So they're just outside of it. They're on the edge. They're not in there just yet. Uh, however, we do have their company commander, he's just in 18 inches, so I'll tell you what, I'm going to use a company commander order for him, and he is going to get them to move, and then fire, I think, at the Germans next to them, or he could get them to actually hit those Germans in the rear. So anyway, let's just see how much it costs them, so it's going to cost them at least one order, and roll for the company commander order. A four is uh, one extra order, so they're just going to cost them three. And I think what they are going to do is. Uh, don't know, should we, uh, should we charge in with them? Or move in with them? Ooh, it's a tough one, this. They need to kill one, two, three, four, five. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They need to kill two more sections to win the game at this point. Now I'm going to get them to move in and then they're going to fire. So seven inch, they're in. They're in the BUA. I want them in the protection of it. And then they are going to fire at these Germans here in the open. I did think about hitting them in the rear. Uh, well they've got seven inches, haven't they? Can they make it? No, they can't. Uh, yes, they can if they pass through the buildings. So yes, they would be within range. Let's do it. They're hitting them in the rear. The Germans ran away from before, so if they can finish these two sections off, they might not do. But let's just see. It's, it's worth a worth a punt, isn't it, at this point? Right. So the British are hitting them with uh, 66 first of all. I hope we're able to follow all this. So they're hitting them with 66. They are flanked, so they are being attacked as though they're suppressed, so that's 3d6, but they also are carrying shock, so that's going to be 1d6, 2 down to 2d6. So there's a good chance the British will win here. Okay, so they've caused four hits, the Germans have hit two. So that is, let's see, that's two, two shock on the British. There we go. Uh, the Germans have taken four shock. So that's one, two, and then a full KIA. So that's as uh, the British have therefore won that. Uh, so the British will then get a rally. So let's just do that quick. No, they haven't passed it, so they're still on two shot. However, the Germans are going to run away very quickly. So let's see how far they go. Blimey, uh, 17 inches, I think that might take them off the table edge, uh, actually they've got to do a morale test anyway, 17 inches, yeah, takes them off the table edge, that is the second kill for that second KIA, that is the Germans third foobar, that is the game over. There we have it folks, the last action, and yes I've just checked, so the Germans have now got 12 sections off, 3 foobars, game over, uh, their morale has collapsed because of those last ones that ran away. Uh, so, <laughs> it was worthwhile going in for that last attack wasn't it? Uh, what? This is as far as the British attack had got, well mind you that was as far as the British attack had got really, they didn't manage to capture and hold any of the uh, BUAs, they did get into this first one didn't they? But they uh, they didn't get past it. Um, they should have possibly tried to quickly um, put a un some units in there straight away, but never mind. Uh, we got the Churchills up. I was just about to bring on the Churchill Crocodile. You can see it here. It was just waiting, ready to go. If all that had failed. It didn't fail, after all. Uh, I don't know what the Germans would have done, because they only had four actions uh, for, their, for their turn, so it was going to be a bit of a squeeze. But that was a tough one. I thought that could have gone anyway, really. The Germans 
put up a very stiff defence, and I think it was uh, it was it was a hard slog for the British to get forward, especially over here. I thought this was going to be a bit of a walkover when they first got into the BUA, but then it suddenly went tits up for them. Um, maybe they should have waited till the tanks turned up. I don't know. Just sit back and, and wait. Is that worthwhile doing? Because you're only counting the clock down then, aren't you? You can just bring the tanks up and the Germans can't really do a great deal against them. Uh, but then I, it was a, a case of, right, I'm going to switch my ideas over to the right flank and just see what we can do here. And they managed to do pretty well. I mean, they got all the way up here, cleared out a couple of German sections, uh, a couple of German platoons, uh, smashed them up. That was um, pretty brutal fighting around the orchard and that little yard. So that was uh, interesting and good as well, wasn't it? Uh, well, I hope you enjoyed that game. I certainly did. I'm finding more as I get on with the O group. Obviously, I'm, I'm still forgetting things, but there's you know there's quite a lot to to forget in the rules. But there is uh, uh, the games are still running pretty well, and uh, I'm using commander orders more often now, and also HQ orders, which I wasn't doing before. I was always kind of a bit scared of using them, just in case uh, you run out of them. But you know you soon build them back up again, so they're worth using, I think. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this game. I certainly have. If you like the channel. Please hit that subscribe button. Uh, do check out my Patreon and also my um, channel uh, membership as well. You do get perks for that. And uh, if not, just subscribe anyway. And I will see you in the next Storm of Steel video. Thank you very much for watching.